you know, before I uh, do this, get to this this wonderful wonderful honor that that uh, you, you kind of you know you, you hear guys talking about hockey and about and about sports and how they imagine their heroes. You know, well, I think I imagine this moment where I present Gordon Lightfoot with something like this, but. I'd like to thank Frank Davies uh, from, from, from everybody because he's really worked hard for, for, for six years, five, six years to bring this into fruition. As, and as most of you know, he's one of the really, really good guys in this business. And he really, he loves people. He loves people a lot, and, and sometimes, uh, and that's reflected in his, his love for music and, and his love of publishing. So thanks, Frank, for, for this award, and I think it's appropriate that this next inductee, this incredible man, I think it's appropriate that his era is represented first and foremost by him because I don't think anybody buddy can argue that probably that era in music was probably one of the most powerful eras, not just in music, but music kind of led the way in a lot of areas, one of the most powerful eras in history. And if you want to drive Gordon Lightfoot out of a room real quick, <laughs> you might say something along the lines of, you know, Mr. Lightfoot, sir, your music has been a huge, huge influence on me, my life and my career. Or maybe you might say something a little more sophomoric, like, you're the everlasting Canadian music poet laureate. Hell, sir, you are the bard. And believe me, I've said both, and I've embarrassed myself both times. And, he's <laughs> and like so many characters in his song, like the minstrel of the dawn, or like a ghost in an old time movie, he'll be gone, he'll be slipping out the back door so fast it'll make your head spin. But uh, even at that, isn't this so, so quintessentially Canadian? That dichotomy, that contradiction, the optimistic melancholy, the contrast of being like Gordon was and is, shy and embarrassed by one-on-one -on -one accolades and adulation, and yet, on the other hand, fiercely proud, so fiercely proud of his art, his craft, his stamp, his songs and his sonic, sonic paintings that he always felt like his peer Bob Dylan should do all the talking, and his sonic paintings that can haunt your soul like the windswept jack pines on Georgian Bay. So without, without apologies, Gordon, and I know he's back here listening, we are very, very proud of your art as well and your music. And please, somebody hold Mr. Light, but don't let him slip out the back door because he's got to hear this stuff. I don't think much time goes by when I'm on a boat out in Georgian Bay in amongst those lonely group of seven jack fine pines on a primordial rock where I see a big train winding its way westward past the Sioux and up towards the lakehead and beyond or I'm driving across the vast ocean of Canadian prairie and into the cathedral-like Rockies or per perhaps gliding in a canoe through the early morning mist in late July in Lake Tomogamy, but a Lightfoot song doesn't come wafting into my head and soul. He is every bit a deeply branded part of our collective sense of Canadian identity and culture as Robbie Burns is to the Scots and James Joyce is to the Irish. Make no mistake about that. His longevity and work ethic, they speak for themselves and, and offer their own special inspiration to established and aspiring songwriters alike. And as an artist and a singer-songwriter, I think I speak for most of us, and I'd like to thank Gordon Light, but on behalf of other singer-songwriters who believe that the song is an art form and that Gordon's songs are works of art, every bit as relevant as classic poetry. But even more importantly, Gordon Lightfoot led the way, and he showed us, like most geniuses, unaffectedly and perhaps subconsciously might do, that you could be true to your roots, you can draw on your influences at home and country, and you can incorporate those inspirations into the fabric of your work and yet still be internationally successful. So Gordon, hopefully I can call you that by now, we salute you, and we couldn't imagine what Canada would be without you, 
and I'm so very honored and very, very proud to be the presenter of this induction. The minstrel of the dawn, the bard himself, please, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gordon Lightfoot. Thank you for uh, inviting me, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, to be here. And uh, I, I just want to like like reminisce a little bit too. I, I remember uh, such a long time ago that I uh, drove down down to Toronto here with songs. Uh, I was thinking about the other day as far back as 1957, which is uh, going back some. And I remember the first person I ever met here was Harold Moon, and I think a lot of us can make that connection there and uh, at that time uh, Harold was uh, of course the, the man at BMI, he and Bailey Burge at uh, BMI Canada and I remember uh, the advice they said on this uh, was to, uh, to keep working on it and come back and see us, you know, like uh, in a couple of years and I, I did just that <laughs> because by the time I, I was 17 I had already come to the the realization that if you really wanted to be successful in, as an entertainer, that you got to write your own songs. And it was a thing that uh, was uh, reinforced with me by, by another person I met further along the road by the name of Art Snyder. Uh, some of you probably can make that connection too. I mean, it's a good thing I'm here tonight because uh, in another few years, people won't be able to make these connections anymore. You know, you follow me? So. Uh, Anyway, and things like that and the encouragement that, uh, that I got from them and uh, coming to that realization and just keeping it up. And that's what I've done my entire career is I've just kept it up all the time and I've gotten to the point uh, now where people say, do you go dry? I say, well, sure, I've had dry spells, but it finally gets around to the point where you get working on so much that you've always got another one to fall back on if one isn't working out for you. Is that not true of life somehow, ladies and gentlemen? A lot of these things came, came true and everything became interwoven and of course the songwriting being the compulsive thing that it was, uh, you know, had to be carried through it. It was unavoidable and then you, the next thing you knew you had a, a record contract and then you knew that you were, well, I better write some songs. And uh, I had that feeling for the first five albums that I made was uh, uh, sort of like the basis for a lot of the, the covers that I got because even though we were not garnering huge hit singles at that time, as we did later on, uh, all this material was being heard and digested by people who might perhaps be in, uh, you know, have an eye out for a song or be looking for songs for their albums. And I remember uh, the first for me, it was, it was Ian and Sylvia. They were the first ones ever. And uh, Sylvia's here with us tonight. And uh, I saw Ian perform two weeks ago out at the uh, Hughes Room. And uh, we do stay in touch, but they were the very first ones, and because of that, I got a management contract, a recording contract, and uh, all of this stuff was happening around the time that I was playing here in Steele's Tavern and the Riverboat. Do you remember those days? The Riverboat days. There's another connection that we, we can make. It. Well, we'll always be able to make that connection, I'm sure. But uh, in any case, I'm very happy to receive the award, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of this this very first one and nice to be available, available for you to do it because I wasn't quite sure there for a while and I'm progressing along and I hope to uh, reappear somewhere around early in 2005. <laughs> and until that time, that's our goal. I want to 
thank you very much for the award, and uh, I hope to see you somewhere down the path. Thank you very much.